All right, today we are talking about the cousins of the parallelogram family. They're the trapezoids and kites. They are part of the quadrilateral family, okay, because they have four sides, four angles. And remember with the angles, once again, angles are 360. So that's why they're part of this family in this chapter. They're like the cousins, so the parallelogram family. So let's go ahead and talk about the trapezoid. It has only two properties which are listed here. One pair of parallel sides, they're called the bases. So these are parallel, side AB and side DC. Because we have parallel, then we have consecutive uh, or same side interior angles, which we know equal 180. So that means we know that angle A plus angle D equal 180, they're same side interior. Plus we know angle B plus angle C equal 180. That's pretty much all we know, except for this really important formula of this topic called the mid-segment. The mid-segment is this line drawn kind of through the middle. It cuts those sides AB, this side and this side in half, also this side and this side in half. I'm not saying that AB is equal to BC, but they cut it in half like that. Or we have this formula where we can find what the length of that mid-segment MN is. So MN, or the mid-segment, equals half of AB plus CD. And I'm just going to mark X and Y here to simplify it. It's half of the bases. So really, our mid-segment is always equal to X plus Y divided by 2. That's that same formula. I just think it's easier to see it like that. So the mid-segment is equal to X plus Y divided by 2, or half of the bases. Okay, we're finding the average. So you need to have that formula memorized. Um, and it's kind of like part of just looking at maybe the midpoint formula because we are finding the middle of something, the average. So let's go ahead and take a look at these two. First off, here are the bases because here's our parallel. So I know that I can add 22 plus 18, and we're dividing that by 2, okay, to find RT. This mid-segment here is X is what they asked you to find. So I'm just going to say that equals X. So when you plug that in and you figure it out, you should get that mid-segment RT to equal 20. Okay? So that's a pretty basic one. Let's go ahead and throw in some variables. So let's look at this second one. Okay? Well, here's our mid-segment. It's cutting our sides in half, so these are our bases. So let's just do the formula. Here is our two X and Y's that we're technically plugging in. So we're going to do 17 plus... 7x minus 5, and we're still dividing that by 2, and now that equals our mid-segment that they already give us, so that equals 20. So this is how we're going to solve for x. I would first multiply both sides by 2, that gets rid of our divided by 2, and I'm going to go ahead and combine these like terms. The 17 minus 5 gives you 12 plus 7x, and then that should equal 40 since we multiply both sides by 2. And we're going to subtract the 12 to get 28, and then divide by 7. So our x is equal to 4. Now if it asks you to plug it back in, sometimes it might ask you for this side length. So you could do 7 times 4 minus 5 and get that side length. But this one just wants x. So that's the mid-segment formula. You need to have that memorized. Let's take a look at the offspring of the trapezoid, which is called the isosceles trapezoid. We know things about the isosceles triangle which is very similar to the isosceles trapezoid. First off, it does have the parallel sides and, and it does have the 180 since they're parallel. But now we have something very similar. So remember that in an isosceles triangle, we have the legs congruent and we have the base angles congruent. Well, really, all an isosceles trapezoid is is an isosceles triangle with its head cut off, technically. Okay, because then now there's our isosceles trapezoid because we have the legs being congruent. So this side and this side are congruent, not the bases, but the legs congruent. And we also have base angles that are congruent, just like the isosceles triangle, but we actually have two sets of base angles. These two up here will also be congruent, okay? And remember, this will be 180, and this will be 180 because of the parallel sides. There's two angles added up. And the third and final one that we don't know about with the triangle is the diagonals are congruent. So that means this length from here to here, if I just label this A, B, C, and D for purposes to figure it out, we know that AC, that length, 
should equal the diagonal of BD. Okay, so those lengths are going to be congruent. So there's three things congruent. Legs, face angles, and diagonals in an isosceles trapezoid. So let's take a look at an example. It says find the measures of B, C, and D. Well, I'm going to look at this and say, all right, here are our, here are our bases. There's our parallel. Here are our equal sides. So if we imagine the isosceles triangle there, our base angles are going to be C and B and A and D. We cut off that end of the triangle. So we know that angle D is going to be 97 because A and D are congruent. But how to find B and C? So remember, these two are going to be 180 because they're same side interior. So 180 minus the 97 will leave you with what B and C are, which are 83 and 83. Okay, so that's the isosceles trapezoid. Let's take a look at the final quadrilateral that we're going to learn about. It's called the kite. He is pretty random. He's got um, five different properties that aren't really the, any properties, or it might be a little bit of a mixture of a property of some of the other ones. So here's the kite drawn with diagonals in, and I'm also going to draw one kite because sometimes it's easier to see a property without the diagonal. So let's go ahead and label the uh, these five. It says two pairs of consecutive congruent sides. So that means those consecutive sides are congruent, these consecutive sides are congruent. Now I'll go ahead and label that down here. Okay? The second one says one pair of opposite angles are congruent. This is where it's easier to mark outside the diagram. It's always the angles that are in between the, new, the two non-congruent sides. Okay? So these aren't congruent, but the angles, these opposite ones here, are congruent. So sometimes it's hard to see with that diagonal drawn in. Diagonals are perpendicular. We've seen this before. We've got perpendicular diagonals from a rhombus, and that's in a kite too, also with a square. Now, the short diagonal is bisected. Okay? Sometimes it's hard to see which one the short one is because it might be a short kite, but it's the diagonal that's connecting the pair of opposite angles. So that diagonal that's connected is going to be congruent. And then the last one is they say the long diagonal bisects um, the angles. Okay, so it's always bisecting the angles that are not congruent. That means these two angles are congruent and these two angles. Take note that I'm putting three here and two there because it doesn't mean that all four of these are congruent. Now, so the kite's got a lot going on. One easy way for you to remember this is that I'm going to highlight this one diagonal here. Okay? This diagonal I'm going to call the line of reflection. And what I mean by that is, remember, if it's a line of reflection, whatever's on the one side of the, the line is exactly the same on the other. So if you look, everything down here that is marked in that triangle is the same that's marked in this triangle. So I could take a kite and fold it in half, and they would line up perfectly. Okay, so that might help you remember some of that. So let's do some kite problems. The first one is finding the measure of angle G. So I'm going to put an X there because that's what we're trying to find. Well, we don't have all four of the angles, but if you remember, one pair of opposite angles are concurrent. Well, I have 75 and 85, those aren't the pair, so I obviously know that G and I are our opposite congruent angles. So I'm gonna label that X too. All right, so in the first slide I said, remember, a kite and all these are part of the quadrilateral family. And remember that the angles equal 360, all four angles. So I have all four angles. Let's go and set up an equation. x plus x plus 85 plus 75 equals 360. Okay, so it's a quadrilateral and it's a kite. When you solve that equation, you should get the measure of angle G to be 100 degrees. So 100 would go here and also 100 would go here. So let's take a look at these two. So we're trying to find the measure of angle K. So I'm just going to mark that X. We're given 32 degrees, 124 degrees, X. And then I should also take notice that here E and I are going to be my congruent angles, the opposite ones that are congruent. So I'm going to label I as 124. And just like we did on the last one, 124 plus 124 plus 32 plus x should equal, it's not 180, I'm so used to saying 180, 360, 
because it is a quadrilateral and a kite. So go ahead and do the math and figure out what angle K is. And you should have gotten X to equal 80, which is the measure of angle K, 80 degrees. All right, the second one is talking about the side length. So I want to refresh your memory about one thing. We're gonna find, I'm just gonna label this as W, X, Y, and Z. Well, these side lengths, I know that these two are gonna be equal, so I only have to find one of them. Likewise, Y and Z are gonna be equal. So how can we find these side lengths? Hopefully, once you see me draw that perpendicular, the 90 degrees, a little light bulb should go off in your head. Anytime you see 90, you should be trying to find the right triangle. So if I redraw this right triangle out my kite with X, and we have four and four for our side lengths, it should indicate that we're using the Pythagorean theorem. X squared is equal to four squared plus four squared. You will get the square root of 32, which is about 5.7. So that is the length of PQ, same with PS or W, 5.7 and 5.7. For your other two side lengths, if I highlight this triangle here, we have 4Y, 4 and 8 as our side length, so Y squared equals 4 squared plus 8 squared. When you go ahead and do your math, you should get this to equal the square root of 80, or that's about 8.9. So this side length is about 8.9 also. So those are the lengths of the side. So don't forget about the side right here because of the 90 inside a kite. All right, so here's our challenge question for today. You're trying to find the value of x. This is a kite. Okay, so see if you can remember the properties, or there's some right triangles within there, and figure out x. 